I'm High Hill Knight. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my rant about a particular aspect of Star Wars Episode 8 The Last Jedi. I'm going to just mouth off about Mark Hamill's essential warning to Ryan Johnson about uh, the character of Luke Skywalker. Uh, this is very informal. It's just me uh, talking and thinking off the top of my head about this specific aspect of the movie. There's many aspects of that movie I liked, many aspects that I didn't like. Uh, I do enjoy the movie overall, but uh, this particular issue, I just wanted to keep this separate from my uh, review. So, I'm going to discuss uh, the particular warning that Mark Hamill gave. When he essentially told Ryan Johnson, I fundamentally disagree with virtually everything you've done with this character, and Ryan Johnson essentially ignoring him. Mark Hamill also sort of wanted to give his input. He said, well, you know, I have some ideas for my backstory. And he was essentially given a cookie, pat on the head, and told to walk away. So, yeah, that's what this uh, topic's going to be about. <laughs> now, when it comes to movie making, you know, there's always creative differences, no matter how well a cast and director and studio get along. You know, directors have issues with the studio, directors have issues with the actors, actors have issues with the studio, there's uh, fan expectations, there's marketing expectations, there's merchandising expectations, there's all types of things that go into the movie making process, the movie business. Uh, so there are many times when the director and writer definitely needs to be confident in what he's making and what he's creating. And, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. You can make something that you think is going to be fantastic and be loved and everyone hates it. And then there's sometimes you put out what you essentially expect to be garbage or just something to pay the bills. And that goes on to make tons of money and tons of popular. And next thing you know, you're uh, got a mega hit on your hands. You know, you never know until you put it out there. But still, uh, when Mark Hamill said, I fundamentally disagree, that's something that really should have struck with Johnson, who actually had pretty much full creative control. I mean, he still has to operate within the Disney demands, but he had pretty much full control of what to make and what to do. Now, when it comes to Mark Hamill and really the entire Star Wars cast, there's nothing quite like them. Uh, Bakes were making those movies before franchises were a thing, before sequels were really a thing. Back when the Star Wars first released, it was rare for any film, no matter how good, to get a sequel. And a third movie was almost unheard of. So just the idea of there was being three movies was amazing enough. But to become a super mega franchise, and when it comes to Mark Hamill in particular, uh, he has done several things throughout his career, but he will always be associated with Luke Skywalker. Okay, Carrie Fisher will always be associated with uh, Princess Leia. Harrison Ford will always be associated with Han Solo and Indiana Jones, despite having a giant library of excellent movies and some bad movies, but still, he'll always be associated with the character. And there's nothing really like them right now, except for potentially uh, three uh, actors. First, we have uh, Sean Connery, then there's Hugh Jackman, and then there's Daniel Radcliffe. Sean Connery, of course, he's still associated with James Bond. He's done tons of movies, but he's still associated with James Bond. Now, imagine if they were to make another James Bond movie, they brought his character back. He's like a mentor or maybe some, uh, you know, specialist for the uh, IMF who's come on as consultant. And he says, well, you know, probably wouldn't want to do it anyway because he doesn't really like that uh, franchise role. But still, he comes on board and he says, no, I want to do this or I have this input. And you ignore him? That would be ridiculous. Now, you can sort of get away with it because there have been various forms of James Bond throughout the years. So, you know, it would be acceptable to make some radical changes with that character because there have been radical changes with the Bond franchise over the decades. But still, if he came to you and gave, said, I have this input or I disagree with something, you probably should listen. Then we have Hugh Jackman, who at the time of this recording has hung up these claws as being Wolverine. But he played the character for like 15 years. Some of the movies are good. Some of the movies are bad. Some of the movies are just glorified cameos. But still, he played that character pretty consistently. And though the Wolverine character certainly existed before he's been around, he'll be existed afterwards. There probably will be some 
uh, Wolverine character movies uh, in the future. But let's first let's for a moment say that there weren't any Wolverine movies or Wolverine in the character in the movies. And then 20 years from now, they bring back Hugh Jackman. They want him to play Wolverine, like a like a middle age of Hogan, not not old man Hogan, but like, like near uh, old man Logan or something like that. And he says, "Okay, well, I had this input for my character, or I disagree with what's going on." And again, you ignore him. I mean, sure, he's an actor. His job is to read the lines and do what you know what he's told and take the direction. But still, you really should listen to him. And then you have Daniel Radcliffe. Daniel Radcliffe stands as close to Mark Hamill as possible. I mean, you know, Mark Hamill is like the ultimate hero of his franchise. Daniel Radcliffe, ultimate hero of Harry Potter. And Daniel Radcliffe, I hope he has a fantastic career. He's done plenty of things on stage and on screen. I hope he has a long career, but still, he will always be associated with Harry Potter along with uh, several of his co-stars. He was signed on to play Harry Potter before the book series was finished, okay? You know, today we have studios trying to do franchises, you know, with multi-picture deals, hiring actors before there's a script or a director, and saying, well, we're going to do like seven films or eight films, there's going to be a trilogy, and if really they're going to carte blanche or whatever, you know. Back when the Harry Potter was going on, the, the movies were being made before the books were finished. So there was no guarantee that the books would even stay popular. There was no guarantee that the actors would stay talented enough to continue to the road. And in some places, they didn't even live to finish uh, the series. So that was a big risk. And even though we had the Fantastic Beasts series going on, there probably will be some other Harry Potter universe movies. Uh, imagine 20, 30, 40 years from now, they decide to make... Uh, um, you know, Harry Potter franchise movie. They bring Daniel Radcliffe back as Harry Potter. Maybe he's like the grandfather or someone. Maybe he's the new Dumbledore of uh, Hogwarts or whatever. And he says, I fundamentally disagree with what you've done with this character. And you don't listen to him. I mean, that's ridiculous. Daniel Radcliffe is Harry Potter. There's only one person on earth that knows Harry Potter better than Daniel Radcliffe, and that'd be J.K. Rowling. This guy is only one person on earth that knows. Luke Skywalker better than Mark Hamill, and that's uh, George Lucas. So, you know, it's important for directors to be confident, and there's a lot of studio demands, and you can't always, you know, listen to all these direct, you know, all these different input. But when a particular actor, a particular franchise comes to you, it says, look, I've been doing this for decades. I've been associated for decades. I know this character inside and out. I have lived, breathed this character. I've gone to countless uh Conventions. I've answered countless fan questions, and and I've done countless interviews, and I've done uh, parodies, and I've done uh, specials. I know this character. And I disagree. What's going on with what you want me to do with it? And, and you don't listen. Then <laughs> if your you know project flops, it's all on you because you know that actor or actress. You know that person warned you. You didn't listen. It's no surprise that uh, it, your, your, the result is terrible or a flop or not well received. <laughs> if someone watching this today becomes a great director or writer in the future and you had the opportunity to work with Daniel Radcliffe or uh, whatever actor of today begins a franchise and then, you know, 20, 30 years later, that's to redo that character. And that person says, I fundamentally disagree, or I think this is crap, or hey, this is wrong, or hey, I just have these ideas, what do you think? Uh, listen to the person, okay? <laughs> Double check what you've made. Uh, pretty much check for every decade that person's been associated with. So Mark Hamill was associated for about 40 years, so you should have checked, double check, triple check, quadruple checked your project, <laughs> okay? So... That's just what I wanted to say, you know. I still love this the the movie. I still like the uh, the Last Jedi, even though I, it has tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of problems. But yeah, uh, Mark Hamill tried to warn you, you know. So sometimes you do need to listen to the actors. It's good to be confident. It's good to want to be different. It's good to uh, try your best, and sometimes you fall on your face. But yeah, listen to the franchise players.
<laughs> okay, thank you very much for watching. I think you appreciate it. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, or just like, and share, subscribe. Uh, I welcome all comments, good and bad. I welcome any input you might have for expansion on this topic. And remember, find inspiration everywhere.